No, this is not the time. I'm not like... What we really want is something that makes his life better, that deals with some of the symptoms that he deals with. Wait, we must destroy the lights. And it's very tempting to, to want to pour all of our resource into whatever the latest piece of treatment research is. But because BBS is so complicated and so varied, there's a, a real risk with everything that we do that it will only work for some part of the community or it won't even work at all. And if we don't build the infrastructure uh, like a registry to support that research, then uh, when one thing doesn't work, we've got to do it all over again for the next research study. The BBS registry is really a joint effort of the Family Association and the Marshfield Clinic. What the Marshfield Clinic is bringing is the expertise in how to privately and securely handle medical information. I decided to take this on because of the Marshfield Clinic's effort to develop the Treatment Center for Barty Beale Syndrome. The registry is a collection of information about a person's health, laboratory studies, that all can be compiled together to give us a composite of that person's health needs. What the association is bringing to the table is our families, our, our network of people with BBS. These are individuals who might live in very diverse places. In order to improve the care, you've got to bring those individuals together. You may not bring them all together in one location, but you can bring them together through registries. The registry is the tools how you collect this information to facilitate the research and the different studies to develop therapeutics and drugs to help the patient. Without the registry, you'd never be able to develop true, meaningful research. If we're going to understand how the disorder truly progresses and how the disorder progresses differently in different people, we need to have longitudinal data. We have often had questions or new ideas or new thoughts and to be able to go into a centralized place and say, okay, let's ask this question, as opposed to sending this email, hey everybody, whose kid can't smell? We've, we've asked this question and we got the answer and we learned stuff, but there's going to be more of those. The thing that I'm most enthusiastic about the registry is that we'll be able to get organized. I don't know what type of information eventually we'll be able to have in the registry. The more information, the better, because we have so many gaps. We just identified a couple of sites that we think modulate the severity of the renal pathology but I can't really study them because I don't have renal data for about half of the BBS patients. I'd love to be able to say to Bob Hawes, Bob, we have these 27 patients with mutation in this. Can we have access to the renal ultrasound data? And if this is something that is approved and we've all agreed is a good idea, then we get it. And that's the end of that. We've got to find ways to translate basic science research into improved life, quality of life. And that's really what the registry is. It's that middleman to take basic science into day-to-day -day practicality. When Nathaniel sees a doctor, right, that doctor is essentially starting from ground zero, trying to look at this vast range of possible symptoms and evaluating each one of them and severities. And when we have a registry where we've got information on as many people with BBS as possible and their medical histories, not only do you save a lot of time, but you can really improve the standard of care for all of those people. As we understand the disease better, we can develop a complete guidelines for when people should do what testing and do the right testing, not too much testing, not too little testing. I was asked by the Foundation Fighting Blindness here in Canada to initiate a registry for retinal dystrophy several years ago. The benefit now is that if a company or if, if me want to do a study on a product or a certain aspect of the disease, you could see in the registry how many patients with rod cone dystrophy, how many patients with cone rod dystrophy, the age demographics, how many with a mutation in a certain gene. So let's say you want to do gene therapy on a certain gene. How many cases are there in your community? That's the only way you can really find it other than knocking on door to door. And so if you could have a mechanism to identify all the BBS patients, and that can only be done through a registry. It's imperative. It's the only way you can make a real difference on a large scale. So although it's housed at Marshall Clinic, it's really a collaborative effort of many, many different individuals. If you share your data with others, you also get information and become part of this GRDR family. It's not only that the BBS can help other diseases that involve kidney, eyes, and obesity, 
but other diseases that involve obesity, kidney and ID can help BBS as well. A registry is so important for research, and it's so important for the quality of medical care that it receives, that you know, that's why we're so happy to have Nathaniel in the registry. We have to have this level of information, and we have to have it from as many people as possible so that we can make progress. And when I think about the things that I can do for Nathaniel, the thing that I can do is I can make sure that information is there so that the researchers and the doctors can do their jobs. When people come to me and they say, will my child develop kidney failure? What can I expect? I can't answer those questions. Today, it's a black box. Kidney disease and Barty Beetle syndrome is simply a black box. Some will get kidney failure, many won't, but I don't know how to predict it. The registry will help me to do that. That's why it's so passionate to me as a nephrologist. It's an essential tool to bring researchers together and it's an essential tool to make a difference on a large scale. You can't do it without a registry. Especially with, with rare disease, the number is important because by fact, by nature, there are less patients affected with the disease. What five families do is whatever. What 500 families can do is a different ball game altogether. So the process was, uh, we gathered up the information that we had, we had an interview over the phone with the people from Marshfield Clinic who are running the registry and were able to convey that information to them, uh, help them connect to the doctors that we have that have Nathaniel's medical records, and um, then they bring all that information together. And so uh, it really was essentially telling Nathaniel's story in the way that we've done before, either with doctors or with family members, uh, and going through that with the people uh, at Marshfield who are running the registry.